a very good evening to all of you uh, today we are again in the evening of a very hot day and in this whole summer season we have seen temperatures soar like no other times means 45 and all is very average nowadays and this very very uh, uh, means scorching heat wave propelled as a cci to uh, organize a webinar on the respiratory manifestations of this heat wave which is going on and to talk on that we have a very very special panel uh, over here for you uh, today the panelists i'll begin with the panelists first uh, we have as our panelists dr chandrakant tarke sir who is a senior consultant uh, pulmonologist from apollo jubilee hills hyderabad we have dr yogesh kumar jain who is an associate consultant bhagwan mahavir Med medica specialty hospital rachi we have dr mahesh who is uh, a consultant pulmonologist at esi hospital azukone kollam you have me dr ravi dosi from indore and uh, we have uh, as our moderator a person whose introduction itself makes me feel so proud that i am very happy to introduce respected dr professor dr suryakant sir uh, sir is currently professor in head department of respiratory medicine kg uh, mu lucknow sir is amongst the top 2% scientists of the world as per the sanford university with almost 400 more than 400 publications 68 chapters and 19 uh, books to his own credit sir has uh, more than 179 awards to his own credit and uh, i would like to now pass over or give the uh, moderation to respected professor dr suryakant sir to carry forward the proceedings suryakant sir okay namaste to all of you uh, good evening to all of you thank you dr ravi doshi uh, for uh, introducing the panel as well as the topic you see very we are very much fond of heat and hot whenever you talk in the uh, medical domain to anyone we all love yes i like hot drinks i like hot hot dot 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 whatever blah 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 and of course most of the time we are saying that heat has not been generated so i think god has listened to us and of course the nature has because we have disturbed the nature so now nature is disturbing to us and that is what global climate change is doing to us and that's why as ravi mentioned that now we are facing the temperature across pan india from 40 to 45 just a few days back i was in dehradun masuri before 23 years back the uttarakhand was part of the uttar pradesh and masuri and dehradun were considered as a very important hill station to us my dear friends you will be surprised to know that when i was present in a meeting at times rishi case the temperature was 43 as rishi case so this is not only the southern part of the india or the western part of the india even the so called hill stations they are now hot and heat is being generated you see uh, in uttar pradesh this term heat or in hindi we called garmi it was become very popular in last assembly election in 2022 and we addressed our chief minister and then of course the address this heat issue and he said ki if you do more you see nuisance main tumhari garmi nikal dunga so i mean he is a very strong man against the law and order you know he is very committed for the law and order i would say he deadly against the corruption and deadly against the nuisance and all these mafias and etc you have seen in the news and etc so now coming to the uh, this panelist i would comment one panelist i don't know who ever has selected but this panel is pan india if you see i am representing basically the northern and the if you can say the western part of the india also ravi doshi is uh, central part heart of the india indore indore is known for the you see the most neat and clean city of the india and ravi doshi is known for his humor mixing with the health education that is the best way of delivering the health education and he is popular across the india so he is so popular that he can get a you see assembly seat in the next mp election i'm sure and he will win and we all will come for his canvassing <laughs> and from the east part we have taken the dr yogesh jain yogesh kumar jain from rachi so representing the eastern part of the india and we are having two panelists from southern part of the india dr mahesh dev and dr chand santarke well known 
you see uh, the the uh, tarke the, the mahesh dev is from kollam which is supposed to be around 70 km from trivandrum if i am not wrong and hyderabad is the capital of telangana and of course you see if we see the supporting chest council of india so today i'll compare i will give you a, you see very good example for the uh, chess council of india so who constitute the core of the chess council of india the heart of the chess council of india and in this heart if i would describe as in various chambers how this heart has been uh, of course the chess council of india then dr ashish dubey is president representing the right atrium dr anil maske is representing the left atrium uh, dr narayana pradeep is representing the right ventricle and dr nh krishna is representing the most important part of the heart that is the left left ventricle sorry the narayana right ventricle and krishna left ventricle but how this heart functions the heart cannot pump the blood without the sa node and who is the sa node any guess from any uh, chess council india member the sa node is none other than the vijay kumar chennam chit if sa node is there not there you cannot have the vibrating you uh, uh, impulse of the heart so that is i have described this uh, chess council of india in nutshell as a heart and this is a pan india panel uh, i'm very happy that uh, to the organizer to selector who has selected this panel and the topic topic if you say it's a very important topic i wonder that no international association no national body no medical platform including indian medical association nobody has come to this topic i really want to congratulate the krishna pradeep and all the team pradeep uh, everyone that they have come to this topic so i think with coming panelists we will discuss what is the pathophysiology of the heat stroke so and what is the clinical manifestation of this uh, heat stroke and what are what are the various illnesses due to this uh, heat and of course the uh, various management aspect management at the primary level and management at the hospital level management at the icu level so i think the, this is the high time uh, when we should have first topic that is by dr jain is for pathophysiology for the heat stroke dr jain am i right for your topic no that is for mahesh sir okay dr mahesh sorry Sure. I just forget, Doctor Mahesh. Mahesh. Sorry. Yes. So, Doctor yes. Mahesh, please come first for pathophysiology and then for management part. The pathophysiology will be delivered by Doctor Mahesh and the management sure, part sir. by Doctor Jain. Sure. So, please, sure, sir. Sure. Doctor yeah. Mahesh, please. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 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 very good evening one and all first of all hearty welcome to this amazing webinar on uh, heat stroke pulmonary manifestations at the outset let's, let me thank uh, dr ns krishna sir dr narayan pradeep sir dr vijay kumar chennam sir and, and uh, dr atul sir for, the, for giving me this opportunity let's move to this presentation pathophysiology of heat stroke first of all uh, let's deal with the definition heat stroke is defined as the body temperature higher than 40.5 degrees celsius that is 105 degree fahrenheit and associated with neurological dysfunction that is altered sensorium uh, there are several values in several books but i have taken these values from latest edition of harrison which is uh, hypothermia more than 40.5 degrees celsius that is 105 degree fahrenheit there are two forms of uh, heat stroke the classic that is non exertional heat stroke as well as this exertional heat stroke first let's deal with the classic heat stroke in classic heat stroke which develops suddenly after a period of prolonged elevation in the ambient temperature like the scenarios of environmental heat waves it is more common in the very young and elderly elderly as well as chronically ill individuals the basic mechanism here is uh, because of the failure of body's heat dissipating mechanisms so the next one is exertional heat stroke it generally affects the young healthy individuals who en engage in strenuous physical activities for a prolonged period in a hot humid environment in exertional heat stroke the crux here is there will be the increased heat production which overwhelms the body's ability to dissipate heat but the body's ability of 
heat dissipatory mechanism is intact here but the increased heat production is the major uh, culprit here which overcomes the body's ability to dissipate heat the environmental uh, the exceptional heat uh, heat stroke characterized by hypothermia diaphoresis and an altered sensorium which may manifest suddenly during extreme physical exertion in a hot humid environment but here the crux here what we need to note is the ability to sweat remains intact but the classic heat stroke is characterized by hypothermia anhydrosis and an altered sensorium which develops suddenly after a period of prolonged elevation in the ambient temperatures so let's uh, consider the risk factors mainly a preceding viral infection dehydration fatigue obesity lack of sleep poor physical fitness and lack of acclimatization are the at risk factors also exercise history can also occurs because of increased motor activities as we already discussed that can also caused by drug use such as cocaine or amphetamine and also complication of status epilepticus and the classic heat stroke most commonly occurs during the episodes of prolonged elevation in the ambient temperatures as we already discussed it can affects in people who are vulnerable who are unable to control their environment and water intake such as infants elderly persons individuals who are chronically ill and also people with reduced cardiovascular reserve and with impaired sweating that is example some uh, disease uh, like some skin disease or ingestion of anticholinergics or psychiatric medications this all are uh, hampering the sweat normal sweat mechanism so the next topic we will discuss is pathophysiology of heat stroke is the major crux here first of all we will deal with the normal thermoregulatory mechanism that is the normal heat homeostasis so under the normal physiologic conditions heat gain is counteracted by the commensurate heat loss so the major cornerstone here is the hypothalamus that is orchestrated by the anterior uh, part of the hypothalamus which function as the thermostat here this guides the body through the mechanisms of heat production as well as heat dissipation and thereby maintaining the heat homeostasis so the afferent receptors are coming from the thermosensors those are located in the skin muscles and spinal cord they send the afferent in uh, informations regarding the core body temperature to the anterior hypothalamus the preoptic nucleus over there where the information is processed and appropriate physiological and behavioral responses are generated such as an increase in cardiac output an increase in the blood flow to the skin which can be increased as much as 8 liter per minute which is the major heat heat dissipating organ over the normal heat homeostasis and uh, the dilatation of the peripheral venous system which also helps in the heat dissipation over the, there and stimulation of the eccrine sweat glands which produces more sweat as we already mentioned the skin is the major dissipating over here dissipating or heat dissipating however organ here and it transfers uh, heat to the environment through the conduction convection radiation as well as evaporation the evaporation is the major mechanism over here and the efficacy of the evaporation depends on the condition of skin and sweat glands and the function of lung ambient temperature humidity as well as air movement whether or not the patient is uh, person is acclimatized to the higher temperature all these factors are different on the efficacy of the evaporation the skin is the major organ for that heat dissipation over here but what happens to the heat stroke that is when heat gain exceeds the heat loss the body temperature rises so the normal homeostatic mechanism that is the normal thermostat hypothalamus is has becomes dysfunction and hypothalamic dysfunctions may alter the normal temperature regulation and which results in unchecked rise in the temperature which leading to the heat stroke so the unchecked rise in temperature which may lead to excessive heat and which leads to the denatures proteins these are the phospholipids and lipoproteins and liquefies membrane lipids so this uh, causes the release of some sort of inflammatory cytokines interleukins and heat shock proteins which produce at the cellular level this unchecked intense heat stress that can be uncompensated and it can be lead to apoptosis as well as this cell death and at the same time on the microvascular level the heat stroke resembles the sepsis and it involves inflammation and which activates the coagulation cascade which eventually leading to this uh, cardiovascular collapse which may lead to multi organ failure cirrhosis and ultimately if death if untreated this is what exactly happens in heat stroke and uh, thank you so much for patient listening thank you all thank you dr mahesh for wonderful disposition of the mechanism behind the heat stroke 
as you said that hypothalamus is basically the maintaining body of our temperature yes. but wherever the heat gain is more than the heat losses then of course we are facing a lot of heat related illnesses so now coming to the Thank clinical you. part that what are the manifestation of this heat stroke for, and of course how to make the diagnosis what are the differentials of this and how we can manage at the primary level and the hospitalized setting so now i invite dr jain dr yogesh kumar jain from ranchi to show some throw some light on these issues dr jain very good evening to all of you who have joined this webinar uh, i would like to thank dr mahesh for giving a very brief uh, talk on the pathophysiology of heat stroke now i will be taking uh, i will talking about treatment and its complications so when we talk about spectrum of heat related illnesses based on the severity it can be heat edema heat rash heat cramps heat syncope heat exhaustion and heat stroke what is most important is we should differentiate between heat exhaustion and heat stroke now if we see heat exhaustion and heat stroke then heat stroke occurs when the body temperature rises above 103 to 104 degree fahrenheit the person may complain of throbbing headache he may he will have no sweating but he will complain of rapid strong pulse nausea or vomiting and he may lose consciousness on the other hand heat exhaustion is somewhat milder with excessive sweating cold pale clammy skin nausea and vomiting and rapid weak pulse so heat stroke the it typically it is of two type that is classical heat stroke and exertional heat stroke it is covered by dr mahesh move forward so once we have a patient whose core temperature is more than 40 degree celsius and has cns abnormalities following environmental exposure he is a suspected case of heat stroke children with elevated body temperature and cns abnormalities should be treated as victims of heat stroke what are the cns manifestations so cns symptoms are impaired judgment inappropriate behavior in children it can be more significant in form of seizures delirium hallucinations ataxia and coma other clinical manifestations tachycardia tachypnea the skin may be flushed and warm or diaphoretic vomiting and diarrhea are common those patients with coagulopathy may demonstrate purpura hemoptysis hematemesis melina and hematochezia so once we have a suspected case of heat stroke the most important is core temperature measurement remember that oral axillary and tympanic membrane temperatures are unreliable in treating heat illnesses we have to take at least a rectal temperature is the most commonly obtained core temperature measurement although esophageal central venous pulmonary artery or bladder probe temperature are potential alternatives when we do a work for a heat stroke patients we do an abg to look for hypoxia raised lactates random blood sugar because in patients with liver injury they can have hypoglycemia derange electrolytes sodium potassium calcium lft coagulation studies to see for dic complete blood count renal function test cerebrospinal fluid analysis in cases of heat stroke who have been treated with cooling but the sensorium is not improving the cns findings are not improving we can do a csf analysis further advanced testing can be muscle function test electrocardiography and imaging studies so if there is a suspected heat stroke victim at the primary level he should be first moved to a safe cool and shady environment and the vital signs can be taken oxygen supplementation should be provided do not give any fluid or food if person is unconscious or has altered sensorium remove all unnecessary clothing and start tepid sponging increase air flow to the person using fan spraying of cool water over the body apply cold compress ice packs at the neck axilla groin and head if possible start iv drip infusion of cold slime check vital signs monitor body core temperature refer or transfer patients to the appropriate hospital so this is a brief figure uh, this is figure showing how we can apply cold compresses on neck axilla and then use a fan 
along with spraying of water to cause evaporative cooling. Once the patient has arrived to the emergency, then we have to assess the airway, breathing and circulation. Many a time patients of heat stroke will have poor consciousness and there is a higher risk of aspiration in these patients. So we need to put a definitive airway for protection of the low, uh, uh, airways. Now, again, all the steps we followed earlier can be again done to cause evaporative cooling, rapid cooling. Core temperature monitoring is very important. Temperature monitoring and cooling is the most important part in management of heat stroke patients. Now, once the patient stabilized, then we do uh, uh, we assess the airway, breathing, circulation. We have secured the airways. Then we have to anticipate and aggressively manage hyperthermia, dehydration, rhabdomyolysis, DIC, high cardiac output, cardiac insufficiency, renal and hepatic failure. So the most important method of cooling is evaporative cooling in which, uh, which is achieved by spraying patients with tepid water to minimize shivering while fanning with high flow fans to maximize air circulation. Alternatively, patients can be placed on a cooling blanket if tolerated. Selective application of ice packs on neck axilla during evaporative cooling may be of additional benefit. Internal cooling, uh, we can measure, we can do this process with the help of cardiopulmonary bypass, but it is highly specialized intervention and is not readily available at most institutions. Newer, less invasive devices such as intravascular cooling catheters have been utilized to rapidly induce therapeutic hypothermia. Gastric, rectal or bladder lavas with cold isotonic fluids have been proposed as additional means of invasive cooling, but these methods are not routinely employed. So, uh, we have to achieve the cooling should be achieved uh, as fast as we can. We should try to decrease the core body temperature as faster we achieve a uh, normal body temperature, the, uh, the more better is the prognosis of the patient. And in children, once we have achieved a 30, 38 degrees Celsius temperature, we should stop cooling measure, measures to prevent overshoot hypothermia. There is not much in the pharmacology therapy. However, if the patient is having seizures or shivering during the cooling measures, benzodiazepines like midazolam can be given. Antipsychotics like chlorpromazine have been used in adults but it should be used with great caution in children due to risk of dystonia. A dantrolene, there are certain studies showing that it has shortened cooling times in adults, but it is not routinely used. And routine use of antipyretics, that is acetaminophen, ibuprofen, are ineffective for treatment of hyperthermia and heat stroke and should not be used as they may exacerbate liver disease and coagulation disorders. So once we have... Uh, cooled the patient, we have to look for the sign, uh, the risk factors and the signs of multi-organ failure and metabolic abnormalities of coagulation. We see complications of heat stroke. It can affect from head to toe. It can cause cerebral edema. It can cause pulmonary edema, which can be cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, ARDS, cardiogenic shock with low systemic vascular resistance, hyponatremic dehydration, acute kidney injury, and DIC. So uh, an important thing that is respiratory dysfunction. Now these patients are at very high risk of aspiration. Hence, a definitive airway, endotracheal intubation, and mechanical ventilation can may be often necessary. They have high metabolic demands, which should be supplemented with an oxygen, the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve is shifted to right. Pneumonitis, pulmonary infarction, hemorrhage, edema, and ARDS occur frequently in heat stroke patients. Why pulmonary edema is common? There are a number of factors. First is we are giving fluid to correct uh, the hypothermia. So it can be fluid overload leading to pulmonary edema, then the patient develops AKI because of dehydration, renal failure, congestive heart failure, ARDS. They can all lead to pulmonary edema. ARDS is also common because of multiple insults, including heat-induced pulmonary damage, aspiration pneumonia, and as a complication of liver failure and DIC. 
ARDS, if it is there, should be treated aggressively with early mechanical ventilation and PEEP. Then there is dyselectrolytemia, there is hypotension, which may lead to arrhythmias and cardiac dysfunction. Hypotension, again, it is because of peripheral vasodilation, cardiac dysfunction and volume depletion. It should be treated with intravenous boluses of isotonic crystalloids. The risk of pulmonary edema is there. So excess sieve fluid administration should be avoided. Teasers are common. Initial treatment should be short-acting benzodiazepines uh, while the cooling measures are initiated. However, as the patient is cooled, the seizures will most likely cease. Acute kidney injury and rhabdomyolysis, there it is multifactorial. That it can be because of direct thermal injury, myoglobinuria, hypotension, and shock. And the patient should be followed closely over the first few days of illness. Renal replacement therapy may be needed at times. Hepatic injury. So hepatocytes are very much vulnerable to uh, uh, heat conditions, heat illnesses. And that is why heat stroke commonly leads to severe but reversible hepatic damage, which can be seen in the form of raised transaminase levels and bilirubin. And during this phase, hypoglycemia, abnormal coagulation, and cerebral edema can occur. DIC can develop during the first three days of illness, and coagulation studies should be monitored during this period. Replacement of clotting factors with fresh frozen plasma and platelets may be necessary. Outcomes. Morbidity and mortality are directly related to duration and degree of hyperthermia. So as soon as we suspect a patient of heat stroke, he should be uh, uh, he or she should be rapidly evaluated and the cooling measures should be initiated as fast as possible. Prognosis depends on the patient population and type of heat stroke. As we said, mortality is up to 63% in elderly individuals with classic heat stroke and it is much lower in adolescents and young adults with exertional heat stroke. And last, prevention is better than cure. We should try to prevent heat stroke uh, by simple means. That is, we can stay away from direct sun exposure from uh, at the time when there is high, sun, uh, high sunlight. Avoid exercise during the hottest part of the day. Acclimate to hot conditions slowly. Eat light food. Drink plenty of fluids. Wear sunscreen, wear light-colored loose clothing and sunglasses, never leave anyone in a parked car. These are simple measures we can follow to prevent heat stroke. Thank you so much for your patience listening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jain. I think you have covered all kind of uh, management process, including the investigation and including the manifestation. And of course, the basic management and then hospital management, IC management, everything, including the complications. So now this is the high time for the uh, certain uh, UC aspects of questions uh, to the panelists and of course, discussion on these questions. So the first question is uh, to Dr. Uh, Yogesh Jain. Yogesh Jain, uh, can you define what is the severe heat wave for our audience? So, uh yeah. Heat wave is considered like it, the temperature is different for the plains and the uh, coastal areas. So if in a plain, if the temperature is more than 50, 40 degrees Celsius, we will consider uh, it to be a heat wave. But then and for the coastal reasons, it is 37 degree. And for the hilly reasons, it is 30 degree. So these are the cutoffs. At least this temperature should be there when we start considering a heat wave. Now, as, as per the definitions, Heat wave and severe heat wave, if more than 5 degree of the average, if the average highest temperature something uh, is there, and if 5 degree plus is there, then we consider it as heat wave. And if it is more than 7 degree, then it is considered as severe heat wave. For example, in planes, if it is 45 degree, because we said that planes may 40 is average, if it is 45 degree, it is heat wave. But if it is more than that, uh, if it is 47, it is severe heat wave. So if it is there for consecutive two days, consecutive two days, this temperature is there. We consider it to be a heat wave. Thank you. Thank you very much. I Sorry. think uh, it is a very clear, crystal clear type of picture for the, uh, the, the heat wave to be considered in the plain to the coastal area and to the hilly area. And what is the severe heat wave? 
Thank you, Dr. Jain. And uh, the question is to Dr. Chandrakant. Dr. Chandrakant Turkey from Hyderabad. Yes, he is there. Uh, what are the criteria used to declare a heat wave? Can you define these criteria? Sir, uh, Indian Meteorological Department, they have fixed the criteria to declare the heat wave in the country. And uh, there are two criteria based on the departure from the normal temperature. And second criteria is based on the actual maximum temperature. And that is for the planes only. And uh, it's defined based on the departure from the normal temperature above 4.5 degrees Celsius to 6.4 degrees Celsius. That is called as heat wave. And severe heat wave, when the departure from the normal is more than 6.4 degrees Celsius. And second criteria based on the actual maximum temperature, uh, heat wave is declared when the actual tem maximum temperature crosses 45, 45 and more. And severe heat wave, heat wave is declared when the maximum temperature goes uh, 47 and above. And to declare the heat wave, above criteria should be made at least at two stations in the meteorological subdivision and for at least two consecutive days. And heat wave will be declared on the second day um, after meeting this criteria. Great. So I think uh, these are the meteorological uh, criteria. Uh, which, of course, the very authentic criteria to declare the severe heat wave. So now uh, coming to and we are forwarding to the panel discussion, we are now going to the uh, Dr. Mahesh again. Dr. Mahesh, uh, what are the heat related illnesses and how can we stay as per order of severity? Dr. Mahesh. Sure. Yes, sir. sure. So, heat-related illnesses encompasses a spectrum of diseases associated with disruption in the regulating body temperature. It comprises uh, from normal uh, heat rash, uh, heat edema, uh, then uh, heat cramps, uh, then uh, heat syncope, heat tetany, and heat uh, ex uh, heat uh, excursion and heat spot. So, as per the in the order of severity, the most severe form, that is most life-threatening form, is that heat stroke. It's a medical emergency, and we have to take the urgent. Uh, medical, we have to seek the me urgent medical care for the same. So, if you are considering the order of severity, the heat stroke will be the uh, most severe form and the uh, heat exhaustion will be the forehand of it. So, I think we should all uh, consider what is the spectrum of the heat wave illnesses so that we can assess that my patient is fitting into that category and uh, that's why he, will, he would require that kind of treatment. So, it's a very important aspect. Thank you, Dr. Mahesh. And now my question is to Dr. Yogesh Jain again. Dr. Yogesh, what are the risk factors and who are more prone to heat-related illnesses? Can you elaborate? Sir, sir uh, uh, patients who are at extreme of ages, that is uh, very uh, young children and uh, uh, older people, those who are physically very weak, uh, lean and thin or morbidly obese, and uh, uh, then who someone who has chronic medical illnesses, maybe a cardiovascular or a renal or a neurological illness, and he's on certain medicines. And uh, then uh, if the uh, patients are taking certain medicines like diuretics or they are taking anticholinergics or barbiturates, uh, they are at a higher risk. So, Okay, great. So I think the age to be considered the pre-existing illness to be considered and of course those who are exposed already exposed for exertion in the uh, of course sunlight for example during the sunny areas for example the personnel like military personnel they have to do their duty their jobs for example yeah. traffic police they have to do their job for example the sportsmen they have to play the indian premier league so they cannot say that heat is there so i cannot play it in lucknow or indore they have to so, I mean, these are the some more uh, susceptible people. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jain. So, now I'm coming to, uh, again, uh, Dr. Chandkant uh, Turkey. Uh, that what are the risk factors for heat stroke and who are more vulnerable to heat stroke? So, I think uh, this is more or less same question. I can uh, skip this question. Now, coming to the Dr. Mahesh again. What are the major pulmonary manifestation in heat stroke? Dr. Mahesh, please. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So, patients with heat stroke uh, commonly exhibit tachypnea as well as hyperventilation, mainly due to direct CNS stimulation, hypoxia, and acidosis. And while considering the common manifestations and common complications, we can say that the first one will be the pulmonary edema, then pulmonary infarction, 
infection, aspiration pneumonia, atelic stasis, and ARDS. Those are the major uh, manifestations uh, which coming, uh, which are the major causes uh, this thing coming under his work. And while considering the pulmonary edema, as uh, Yogeshwin already mentioned, that the most common uh, cause for this pulmonary edema in his work may be the uh, fluid overload. That is due to the excessive recitation strategy and rehydration therapy as a part of this, there will be the chances of fluid overload. The other chances are there is uh, cardiac failure, renal failure, uh, and even secondary to ARDS, this pulmonary edema can happen. And uh, while considering the ARDS, there are the multiple instances strategy will be there. The direct thermal injury to the lung is the one, one, one reason. The other one will be the liver failure. And secondary to that, ARDS can happen. And the other one will be the secondary to aspiration pneumonia, ARDS will happen. So while considering all these, these are the major pulmonary manifestations in uh, each one. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Mahesh. Uh, I think Dr. Ravi is uh, thinking that uh, Dr. Surikant probably uh, has not justified his role as a moderator. He has not asked a single question. So, Ravi, I am coming to you. Yeah. Anyway, so Ravi, what are the determinants, what are the derangements in liver function test noted in each stroke and at what period it is evident? Uh, sir, basically, hepatic injury is a very consistent finding in all heat related illnesses. And uh, from starting from 48 hours, uh, we can find jaundice in these patients. And the SGOT, SGPT at times may even shoot up to thousands. And this derangement will go on for several weeks. It can go on up to two weeks. And along with uh, jaundice and signs of liver failure, we can also get severe coagulation abnormalities because of lack of coagulation factor synthesis. So usually the more derangement is seen in early phase, but we can see prolonged involvement up till two weeks also. Oh, great. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, Ravi, because this is the one of the neglected area for the I mean, most of us, we are not correlating that liver function will be drained during the heat stroke or heat uh, related illnesses. So, thank you, Dr. Ravi Dosi. Uh, now, I'm coming uh, again coming to the Dr. Jen. Dr. Jen, uh, how will a heat stroke affect the serum calcium level? Very interesting. So, so normally, yeah. uh, uh, two most electrolytes which we see is sodium and potassium. But in cases of severe heat stroke, because there will be muscle injury, there will be rhabdomyolysis and acute kidney injury. So because of the active binding of the calcium to the uh, uh, damaged muscles, muscle fibers, they will bind more of the calcium, which will lead to hypocalcemia in the blood. Great. Thank you. Because this is also one of the neglected area where we cannot imagine that, yes, hypocalcemia can occur during the heat-related illnesses. Now, coming to the, again, Dr. Chandrakan. Dr. Chandrakan is here. Yes, he is very much here. Uh, what is the basic treatment for heat stroke and heat tetany? Uh, sir, as you know, heat stroke is a severe life-saving condition. Uh, patient uh, will have, the, along with the uh, high temperature in the body, more than 100, 405, along with that neurologic involvement will be there. We should uh, see the symptoms such as if, this, uh, if the patient is disoriented, are having convulsions, whether the patient is conscious, oriented or not. We should take the basic vitals and uh, basically we should focus on the airway, breathing and circulation. We should address it and uh, we should make the patient cool as much as possible. We should move the patient from the hot environment and uh, we should do the cooling by various methods such as ice packs as described in the slides also. Ice packs in the groin, in the axilla and we should uh, give the cold water bath also and even uh, if available you can do the gastric lava to the cold saline these are the cooling methods uh, apart from this every breathing center we should do these activities also and uh, uh, and we should also take care uh, the temperature should not fall below 38 because even hypothermia is also harmful that's why cooling we should note down we should not uh, reduce the temperature below 38 degrees celsius and also, okay. while reducing, uh, we should not use these uh, drugs like uh, paracetamol or NSAIDs to reduce the temperature uh, as we use for normal fever. And uh, apart from this, uh, we should address the electrolyte imbalance and uh, acid-base imbalance, uh, uh, the normal basic uh, this uh, ICU uh, protocol we should follow. And uh, if the patient becomes conscious oriented and uh, we can uh, do the further investigation to rule out any complications related to kidneys and liver. Uh, and uh, related to the heat titani, basically it's a uh, patient present with the hyperventilation, 
and uh, par- uh, perioral paresthesia and um, carpobidal spasm muscle spasm in that case uh, also we need to patient uh, we to move the patient to the pool area and also we should ask the patient to calm down and slowly this hyperventilation also will subside uh, with these measures great uh, thank you dr chandraga <coughs> and uh, i think this is very important what he mentioned that uh, the temperature should not be of course less than 38 because it can create uh, further ma- many problems and uh, of course especially it should be monitored in children and the the uh, next question is to again dr mahesh dr mahesh uh, can you throw some light on what are the drugs which may result in more tendency to develop heat stroke very interesting question sure 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 No. Sir, first one will be the stimulant drugs, which includes uh, cocaine as well as amphetamine. Uh, which uh, major action mechanism action will be there? They will increase the motor activity uh, as well as uh, uh, increases in the meca- metabolism by directly acting through the indirect pathways of uh, increasing the body concentration by dopamine, dopamine as well as norepinephrine. By that way, it will increases the metabolism as well as uh, the motor activity, which will impart the increase in heat. so the first one will be the stimulants which include amphetamine as well as cocaine the next one will be uh, the certain drugs which can hamper the normal uh, sweating mechanism uh, which include uh, certain psychiatric drugs certain anticholinergics or even certain generation antihistamines this can uh, coming into this category and uh, certain other drugs which can uh, causes reduction in the cns responses like barbiturates sedatives already yogeshwar has explained well so this flux can also impair with this uh, uh, heat loss mechanism and it can impart uh, worsen or worsens the heat stroke and the other uh, one will be this um, uh, cardiovascular certain cardiovascular drugs actually what their mechanism will be like they will uh, redu- uh, diminishes the cardiovascular responses during the heat stroke and it will impart like beta blockers calcium channel blockers all uh, these category drugs they can also impart to this uh, category and this can also causes more uh, worsens the symptoms towards heat strokes so i think all of you are requested whenever you are tackling with this such type of patient you must take the uh, the background uh, diseases and their treatment history also that's also very important part of the clinician thank you dr uh, mahesh now coming to dr ravi doshi dr ravi uh how to diagnose uh, health heat related uh, illnesses in pediatric age uh sir uh, like we have discussed that pediatric groups are more predisposed the extremes of age are more dis- uh, predisposed to have health related issues so in children we have to be very careful whenever heat wave uh, prevalent conditions are there in the climate then if a child presents with rashes on the body a patient the child becomes extremely irritable dehydrated he develops abnormal edema with no other history except exposure to high temperature if the uh, child develops some neurological manifestation like muscle cramps stroke he becomes very exhausted or starts showing tetanic spasms or has syncopal attacks in these conditions and with history of exposure to high temperatures for some period of time in a child we should think of heat related illnesses thank you ravi wonderful answer so i think uh, we must care on priority the pediatric population and we should remember what are the various uh, manifestation and how to diagnose these uh, heat related illness in pediatric age group now coming to dr yogesh again uh, dr yogesh jain uh what is the treatment for health related illness in pediatric age group because we have already listened dr ravi doshi that uh, how to diagnose such condition and the question comes to how to manage them as ravi sir uh, very clearly said that we have to identify the spectrum of the illness we have uh, uh, it, it can be a simple heat rash up to heat stroke so the if it is a, a milder form uh, if it is there just a heat rash or heat syncope or a heat tetany so we can manage them uh, we can remove them from the place of heat we can cool uh, them uh, not need to admit them and just uh, uh, rehydrate them maybe orally or with iv fluids but in the key, case of heat exhaustion and heat stroke we have we need to be more aggressive at because children uh, children will have a lot of cns manifestations like uh, uh, generally they will uh, the seizures will be more in the children and the manifestations uh, they will have a uh, to they will respond more to higher temperatures the uh, fatality can be more so our aggressiveness should be more in the case of children uh, 
and cooling itself is again the most important part like in adults we have to cool the patient in children also cooling is important but in children uh, the cooling should be stopped at 38 degree celsius because over cooling may may lead to overshoot hyperthermia uh, hypothermia which can be even fatal for the uh, children and uh, uh, others like we have to again uh, cooling and then uh, temperature monitoring every 15 minutes the temperature should be monitored till it come it is uh, and the vital monitoring so it is similar but with more aggressiveness uh, more watchfulness and uh, uh, just to see that uh, uh, they are treated adequately so and we should also ensure as you mentioned brightly that uh, we, the ch child should not go into the hypothermia that is also very risky okay wonderful uh, now i mean uh, coming to again uh, dr chandrakant dr chandrakant uh, what are the preventive measures to be taken for health heat related illnesses in pediatric group sir in general uh, for yeah. any age group or pediatric age group uh, basically uh, we should uh, uh, we can prevent the health uh, heat stroke by certain measures uh, for example we should reschedule the timings of their activities uh, we can restrict it to morning and evening just to say an example uh, last uh, month maharashtra one episode has happened yeah. i'm not discussing any politics but just uh, to say the timing of that event in the maharashtra where the maharashtra bhushan award ceremony was held was 1 11 am to 1 pm uh, basically that was there and uh, during that period almost uh, 14 people they died because of the heat, heat stroke that's why uh, timing rescheduling is very much important factor uh, especially for the children we can uh, reschedule their activities their break games in the morning and evening and we should restrict the uh, peak uh, temperature period and we can advise the children to wear the light clothing with um, maybe white uh, colored clothes not very dark clothes to so that to prevent the absorption of heat and sunlight and it should be well ventilated and they should wear the hats also white brimmed hats and uh, most important we should teach the children to drink the water frequently even if there is no thirst especially during the summer season even if they are not thirsty we should tell them to drink more water and uh, and frequently they should take the rest if they have to play during the sunlight they should take the rest and they should drink water in between and uh, these are the measures to prevent the sunstroke in the children i think you have rightly mentioned that the rescheduling of the time is very important if you are exposing your child to the of course the most uh, powerful exposure of the sun day that is sunlight sorry that uh, that is having the maximum heat temperature for example temperature may be 40 41 42 43 43 so i think we should not uh, allow our children to go in such type of program so thank you thank you dr chandrakant and of course i'm again uh, coming to dr mahesh dr mahesh what are the danger signs or red flag signs in the pediatric age group for this heat related illness okay okay so uh, we have to watch for the danger signs first because need to seek the immediate medical care whenever we are finding this kind of danger signs first one will be the refusal to feed then the excessive irritability decreased urine output and oral dry mucosa uh, oral uh, oral mucus will be dry and uh, sunken eyes absence of uh, tears and altered sensorium and excessively sleepy or dizziness and bleeding from uh, any sides and uh, even seizure episodes new onset seizure episodes any sort of these kind of uh, symptoms will be seen or any signs will be seen this should be a danger sign and first of all need to seek immediate medical care for that child uh, thank you i think you have uh, very uh, well elaborated all the red flag signs for the heat related illnesses in children now again i am coming to dr ravi joshi dr ravi uh, children are very much fond of you and your videos can you tell them that what are the guidelines to be followed by children going to sports activity in this season that is summer season sir uh, sir before answering that question one good news more around 985 people all over india have logged in sir for listening wow. to you moderate uh, our session sir so, uh, great, great. <laughs> sir now uh, coming to guidelines sir 
uh, one uh, like uh, the, like the chandrakan sir has already uh, given the main uh, outline what we need to do is first we need to screen ch children if they are suffering from any chronic health conditions or if they are having recent history of gi illness gastroenteritis then we should definitely not allow them to participate in outdoor activities we should be very particular of this history in the past 10 to 15 days after that we should give time for acclimatization we should uh, see that if uh, somebody want to spend for e uh, one conditions they should be given one to two weeks time to acclimatize their body like chandrakant sir told a white uniform with white cap or green cap is indicated it should be loose fitting and it should be having good aeration it should be comfortable clothing the the children should be well hydrated their scheduling should definitely be at cooler times starting from early evening to night hours and there should be a good preparation in all facilities where the pediatric population will be spending time in heat for having good medical equipment for rapid cooling and good uh, infrastructure and water backup thank you ravi uh, thank you ravi for uh, telling us the various kind of precautions that can be taken now i mean i'm coming again to dr yogesh jain yes dr yogesh jain is there dr yogesh can you give some idea of screening of athletes who are very much predisposed to heat related illness um uh, sir uh, for screening of athletes yeah. uh, the yeah. coaches and the doctors should ask them if they are suffering from any underlying health condition which may predispose them and if they are taking any medicines like we talked about a list of medicines which are Uh, anticholinergic barbiturates diuretics beta blockers if they are taking any medicines that should be noted and screened and also if uh, the uh, they should give the the recent history of fever or any gastrointestinal illnesses should also be checked whether uh, if they had any in the recent uh, past they should not be allowed to participate in the heavy sports great so i think these uh, type of screening maneuvers they can be done for the athletes and uh, to avoid them to, uh, any of course mishappening and again i'm uh, coming to dr chandkan dr chandkan uh, can you tell us what are the first aid instruction on heat exhaustion and heat stroke in children uh, sir heat exhaustion and heat uh, stroke these are the two different entities yeah. we should uh, first uh, should identify uh, whether uh, the patient is having heat stroke or heat exhaustion the common symptoms of heat exhaustion are the increased thirst uh, and uh, muscle cramps nausea vomiting irritability headache and increased sweating and increase the body temperature more than uh, 40 uh, so the, uh, it is increase more more but it should be less than 105 and a heat stroke along with all these manifestation person can get the convulsion severe headache and uh, even uh, uh flushed uh, this uh, patient is unable to wake up also and uh, body temperature rises up to 105 these are the symptoms of the heat stroke and uh, first aid uh, we should bring the child indoor and uh, into the shed immediately we should remove the clothing and uh, basic clothing we should keep to maintain the dignity of the child and uh, child should lie down with uh, uh, raised feet slightly and uh, we should uh, use the fans to cool the child we can uh, spray the normal tap water or do the tap water sponging and uh, if the child is alert awake we can give frequent sips of cool water or clear liquids whatever available but if the child is vomiting uh, we should not give the feed and uh, even if the child is unconscious we should not feed them and uh, in case of vomiting we should turn the child uh, on the another side to prevent the choking and obviously we should we can prevent uh, as the dr ravi sir said Uh, the light color clothing and uh, avoid outdoor activities during uh, summer this uh, high temperature timing uh, this we should avoid okay so uh, wonderful uh, of course uh, the precautions and instructions which you have uh, told us now i mean again i'm coming to doctor uh, of course the dr ravi dosi dr ravi so very important question to you what is the hospital preparedness plan can you summarize basically hospitals have to be well prepared by having a broad uh, they should have a basic 
framework for implementing heat response uh, activities and uh, they should have good infrastructure like basic things like thermometers adequate ors adequate ice packs bp measuring instruments and your surface lotions the like calamine lotions should be uh, available in a good quantity uh, the hospitals should start uh, having good iec material or by creating awareness of heat stroke when to suspect what are the signs and symptoms and and where, where there is the rapid treatment uh, team for heat stroke management and basically they there has to be more educational activity and awareness like i would like to quote our own webinar today so many people have expressed their surprise that actually we don't know so much about heat related illnesses so it is a good plan to spread, discuss this topic more and have more educational activities on it yeah ravi you have also put a you see a government action plan i yeah. have seen in that group whatsapp group which we have made for this particular this webinar and i have seen what government has made is there any can you briefly summarize what is the government action plan for this uh, combating this uh, problems of heat uh, stroke and heat wave so the government has formulated guidelines for the management of these heat illnesses uh, heat related illnesses and it defines these heat related illnesses both the mild ones it gives a proper management action plan for the mild illnesses as well as for the severe form of heat related illnesses like uh, heat stroke and uh, uh, when patients develop convulsions and what to do what are the do's and don'ts and they are freely accessible from the ministry of health and family welfare website sir yeah so uh, we can have a lot of information from health and family welfare government of india website also and i have uh, gone through very fast uh, that document also i think this is a beautiful document uh, read by the uh, ministry of health and family welfare government of india and those who want to really more and more information and more updation and more facilities created by the government they can log in they can go through the website of this government uh, ministry of health and family welfare government of india so my next question is to uh, dr yogesh jain dr jain can you tell me what are the guidelines for investigation of suspected heat related illness and or mortality or death uh when i was uh, preparing for this topic and went through the uh, that document of the ministry of health and family welfare yeah. so it's a it's a long actually it's a big form Uh, yeah. containing lot of sections section a uh, there are i think six or seven sub sections which we have to fill in that form uh, which includes uh, the first one is the deceased identified details uh, that is the general de uh, details what is the name age sex of the patient address then what are the death details means what was the condition in which the uh, he was found means he was found unconscious or dead where he was found whether he was at workplace or at home or going somewhere or in the heat and uh, hospital where the disease was brought so first is the deceased identifying details then death details then the uh, clinical history clinical history in past 24 hours before death what was the skin condition whether he was having altered mental uh, sensorium what was the core body temperature and what was his vitals before and uh, after uh, uh maybe uh, when he was unconscious or before dying and at after death uh then we have a section which includes what outdoor activities he was involved prior to his incidents indoor conditions just before the illness the medical conditions recorded at the first medical contact whether it is from Uh, a uh, from the medical records or someone who has accompanied we will ask the medical condition whether he was suffering from some disease and uh, he was taking any medicines and uh, last point is weather data from indian meteorological department so once there is a suspected case of heat stroke death then after filling all the details that day temperature is seen previous 3 days temperatures are seen whether it is fitting in the criteria of heat stroke or uh, severe heat stroke and on uh, after this entire work up uh, the person is leveled as whether he has really died of the heat stroke or there is some other cause so i think uh, these were uh, some questions which are of course very 
authentically prepared by Dr. Vijay Chandam Chetty. I'm really thankful to him to assisting me, to helping me for uh, forming, formulating these questions. And uh, now we have a lot of questions from the audience also. So I'm going to the, the questions from the audience. And uh, the this one question is uh, uh, from Aurangabad. That is the Dr. Sadhana, uh, Aurangabad, Maharashtra. And uh, she's asking that what is the incidence of AKI in heat stroke? And uh, I think uh, we can ask this question to Dr. Yogesh only. Yes. Uh, can you, Yogesh, have an idea what is the acute kidney injury chances of uh, in cases of heat stroke? Um, exactly in the terms of incidence, we cannot say, but definitely. Uh, if we see the spectrum of heat illnesses and heat stroke, there is severe dehydration, hypovolemia, and uh, there is a, so there are very high chances that the patient may, ha may have raised serum creatinine and urea. The incidence part I cannot say, but definitely they are at very high risk of acute kidney injury, not because of volume depletion, but also because of muscle injury and rhabdomyolysis. So and uh, incidence exact, I cannot say. The uh, incidence high. exactly is not on. That is true because uh, uh, heat, stroke, and heat waves and such type of uh, things are not not regular one. They are not coming every year. After two three years, they are coming. And of course, the uh, incidence is also variable because it may vary from southern part to the northern part, and maybe in in this hemisphere and this another hemisphere. Anyway, so uh, exact incidence is not known. But uh, another question is uh, from the Manisha Arora Delhi that uh, what are the complications seen if antipyretics or NSAIDs are given in heat stroke? I think Dr. Ravi Dosi has especially instructed that not to give such medications. Dr. Ravi, can you highlight what will happen? Dr. Manisha is asking from Delhi to you. Actually, sir, like uh, th there is this uh, possibility of acute kidney injury, such sort of medications can contribute more to that particular acute kidney injury. Yeah. And yeah. that arrangement in the anti-inflammatory mechanism can end up harming the patient more rather than helping the patient more. Yeah. And we have to cut down the temperature not by these medications but by giving coolants. We need to give coolants like cold saline or cold sponging or applying ice packs at various parts of the body for bringing out temperature. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Jain, uh, this is management part question. I think you are the best person to deal with. Uh, the uh, again, Dr. Manisha is asking what anti epileptic drugs should be used if patient of heat stroke develops convulsions. So, uh, we we generally prefer uh, uh, benzodiazepines that is midazolam. Okay, midazolam so is, is short acting one. Okay, so this is your choice. Okay, so I think uh, the I think Dr. Manisha will be satisfied with the answer. And uh, again, uh, there is a question uh, that uh, is. ORS safe for heat exhaustion? Yes, again, Dr. Jen. Is oral rehydration solution? Yes, yes. ORS is safe for heat exhaustion. Uh, if the patient is uh, uh, conscious and well oriented to time, place, and person, we can definitely give him oral replacement uh, solutions and ORS can be given. High salt diet, high sugar diet should be avoided. That may further precipitate dehydration. But ORS is a balanced uh, nutrition we can give to the patient. Yeah, this is very important. If the patient is not conscious or even some semi-conscious, we should not give orally anything, including the ORS. So that's very important. So I think uh, uh, we will wait for some other questions. Till then, we can have some freelance questions. Uh, you see that is coming in my mind as a moderator. So I think we, I'm coming to uh, Dr. Ravi. Dr. Ravi, uh, I think the, we are having some kind of sensitization within 40-45 uh, minutes to our audience regarding the various manifestation of heat-related uh, illnesses and how to manage them, what is the first level, first level, what is the basic level of management, and then how to manage in the ICU and hospitalized patient. Now, the question comes the awareness. As a doctor, we are also morally and professionally responsible for creating the awareness of any disease or any health issue, not only to the society, but at least to our the healthcare workers. So uh, what do you think in hospitals? Because majority of we are related to hospitals that, for example, I'm related to the government hospital, one of you may be related to the corporate hospital, some may be related to the uh, the private uh, the nursing homes and the small clinics, etc. 
So what kind of preparedness, what kind of sensitization, what kind of awareness things uh, should be done at the our own level, whatever we are owning at a small clinic or a nursing home or a private hospital, corporate hospital or a government hospital, that whosoever health were working in it, number one, and whosoever is coming as a patient or attendant in our campus during this heat wave. So can we have some posters, some pamphlets? You, are, you have already talked of some pamphlets. Can we have some awareness? Uh, you see uh, a big uh, banners, flags, so be aware of the heat wave during this time do do the, these are the do's and these are the don'ts can you highlight rabi i think you are the uh, you see most suitable person to answer this question thank you sir uh, yeah. sir I, I i definitely agree with you sir because uh, despite like uh, like in indore if i can talk about it sir we currently don't have any warning signs as for these heat things are concerned but uh, uh, definitely our temperature is soaring 45 degrees nearby Maharashtra like Chandrakant sir told people died during a public yeah. event. So we need to raise more awareness by having posters and I think the field people working in the field are more exposed to such risks. So maybe radio would be a good idea because a lot of people tune into the radio all the time. So more frequent radio messages, big yeah. big holdings. Nowadays everywhere video holdings and video displays are there. So there should definitely be more displays play of such uh, awareness and like uh, uh, there is one very I am sure in all parts of India people uh, uh, these lion and rotary and many religious people they open piaus or piaus and water yeah. outlets so similarly there should be spread of information also in these outlets that if you are having these symptoms be more careful and take medical help yeah you are true uh, you are 100% correct that such kind of awareness program should be done now, I'm coming to uh, Dr. Mahesh. Dr. Mahesh, do you think uh, that, uh, you see, about MBBS student, I don't think they have any uh, subject uh, in the curriculum or the syllabus. So do you suggest that we should have a small uh, one-page or two-page kind of things uh, or a short lecture by the other teachers? Or do you think that, yes, we should have a sensitization of our healthcare workers whatever the facility we are working on it, whether it's at a small clinic or the corporate hospital or the government hospital. Dr. Mahesh, please. Sir, I'm completely agreeing with your statement, sir, because uh, while even we are con uh, taking this topic and while we are referring to the uh, social media as well as net, very minimal data only, the actual factual data will be very minimal regarding this piece of even though that much uh, prevalent in India, even uh, while considering the history as well as all uh, this all part of India, that the uh, heat waves are that much common, and several people are affected that much. And uh, so that's why the major keystone will be the awareness only. That the awareness should be the health education, including the patient as well as the co healthcare workers, as well as everyone should be uh, taken care of. Like uh, awareness campaign should be available, and we should take wisely all the advantages of the social media, including YouTube as well as the Facebook, and we can. Uh, make some short videos regarding uh, this uh, heat stroke and this uh, dangerous aspects and this warning signs, especially the pediatric age group are more vulnerable and as well as the vulnerable populations that should be taken care of, especially these uh, younger, younger children as well as this uh, chronically ill and elderly persons. So we should give the proper awareness to them and we can uh, give that, like, that way, like uh, short videos or pamphlets or posters or even articles in uh, major Indian medical association and journals and something like that. Like that, we can make that awareness. That is the key step, I think, sir. I'm completely yeah. agree. Dr. Chandrakant, uh, Dr. Chandrakant, uh, this is my question to you, rather my query to you. That uh, do you think uh, that for the geriatric population, some kind of professionally uh, professional advisory or expert group advisory should come that uh, elderly population, you see they, most of them are they retired and they are very much uh, fond of morning walk and evening walk. And now we are seeing at 7 o'clock, even at 6.30, there's a lot of heat, uh, temperature is raised. Heat is there. So what kind of suggestion uh, you can give the elderly population? Because the pediatric population, we have discussed a lot. Five, six uh, questions were there. But uh, I think this is the time to highlight. So what precautions and what expert opinion you can give to the geriatric population, our people, 60 plus in this country. And I think there are uh, roughly 10 crore people in this country who are 60 plus. So your uh, views on the geriatric population. 
Sir, as we know, ki most of the deaths or uh, incidents is more common of heat stroke in the ex- extremes of especially in the infants and elderly population. No. And also, one of the risk factor for the re- heat stroke or uh, heat related illness is a comorbid condition. And majority of the elderly people, they will have some sort of the elder comorbidities such as liver disease, lung disease, or some heart disease. These patients are prone for the uh, complications related to heat. No. And also related to the drugs, also major to this patient uh, with the heart disease, they will be on some diuretics, kidney disease patient, those who have some uh, restriction in the fluid intake. We see commonly, especially in the kidney patient, if the doctor tells them, you don't use uh, one point more than 1.5 liter of water. But during the summer, if they are having more activity or they go to outdoor activities, they should increase the water intake. They need to adjust as per the advice of the doctor. It's not that they should restrict their uh, fluid intake to the particular level, but depending on the temperature and the environment, you should adjust it. That's the reason elderly people, uh, they are uh, not aware of these things. And uh, that's why uh, as a physician or as a pulmonologist, whenever they come to us, we should educate them related to the heat, how to prevent the heat stroke and how to maintain the water intake uh, depending upon the season. That is more important. And even uh, the society as a, in general, what are the public programs or some community gatherings, we should uh, educate these people uh, to prevent from the heat stroke. Yeah, I think in this regard, I'm agree 100% fully agree with Dr. Ravi Doshi and all of our panelists. I think radio and video, these are the two important things uh, because we should not have di- directed by lecture of awareness program and then again we are calling in this heat wave. So I think radio and video. So a lot of radio programs, because now people, a lot of people, they are having radio in the car also, in the drawing room also, in the mobile also, and everybody is accessible for that. And of course, similarly, we should more put, I think we in the month of uh, another uh, uh, 15, 20 days, we should continue to post our videos on our YouTube channels that uh, the, the pre- do's and do's and precautions for the heat wave. That is the most important uh, way of creating awareness in the society. So we have covered the do's and do's and pre- uh, preparations, uh, precautions for the pediatric group, the geriatric group. The third important group is that is the people having comorbid condition, people having underlying disease, maybe lung disease, maybe heart disease, maybe liver disease, maybe diabetic, maybe cancer patient, so many patients. So now this question, uh, I'm coming to Dr. Mahesh. Dr. Mahesh, can you throw some light that if the person is having one or two illness, maybe hypertension, maybe diabetics, maybe some others. So what kind of instruction would you like to give uh, uh, for such type of patient? Because our chest council of India doctors are logging in and they can advise to their uh, such kind of uh, patient population these instructions. Yes, please, yes, Dr. Mahesh. Sir, first of all, uh, while considering the hypertension strategy, uh, mm-hmm. there are certain drugs which will impart more chances of heat stroke, which includes only calcium channel blockers as well as beta blockers. So yes. we have to give the wise decisions to them actually, like whenever we are taking those for, uh, type of drugs, there will be the decline in the cardiac response towards the heat stroke event. So we should, we should be taken care of and uh, the proper preventive strategies should be, should be taken while going outside, like uh, either you can use umbrella or sunscreens so or proper hydration should be there. While considering the hydration status, where you have to take uh, the opinion from the consultant uh, specialty people, like whether a patient is having any CKD, chronic disease or any heart failure patient, you have to take the that advice wisely and you have to take the proper advice from your treating physician. And um, also, uh, while t- taking diuretics, these kind of uh, uh, patients also show there is more chances of dehydration and there, there is more chances of uh, risk of uh, heat stroke towards them. So you should uh, take care of that too. And there are certain uh, people who are uh, taking certain medications uh, for the skin, which can act as a uh, photosensitive reaction to them and that will impart more towards uh, this uh, heat stroke risk. And also certain uh, drugs which can, uh, which can lead to the uh, impairment in the normal sweat mechanism that includes certain anti-psychiatric anti-psych- uh, medications and uh, certain anticholinergics. So, in that scenario, patients are also we have to counsel regarding the same, and we have to uh, counsel them the danger signs. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one another story that is we have covered the pediatric population, the expert opinion, the panelist opinion for the genetic population for those who are having underlying disease. And now we are having the, uh, you see, uh, a community divide 
for example uh, we have a elite population we are having a uh, affi- uh, i think say the sufficient and efficient people who are having air conditioned in car air conditioned in home now there is a poor population rural population where we don't have such kind of facility so can we have some kind of opinion for these people also who are living in the uh, kacha houses who are living in the jhopris who are living in slum areas and who are the poor they can't afford even the fan or cooler what to talk of air conditions so what things uh, will you says yeah i think dr rabi will answer this question dr rabi please because so, india is a 142 crore population yeah. and as a doctor as a, a humanity point of view we have to take care of all 142 crore people not only the uh, the, the city dwellers or the metro dwellers yes sir i i think the group that you have talked about are the actual people who are exposed to this highest risk of having heat yes. related illness and they are definitely not uh, having very good access to health care so it is very important to uh, to strengthen our public health infrastructure with the management of health related illnesses and like our basic anganwadis our basic primary health care centers should have good material and facility like uh, the availability of cold saline is not possible without a refrigerator or that without a freezer so basic availability of electricity at the village level at the taluka level is very very important for management of this uh, problems and th- there should be an awareness that uh, what are the food that is to be consumed proper water that is to be taken and very important like uh, it was highlighted in our discussion that even if you are not thirsty drink water so that is one very important thing ye log wo hote hain jo shayad ek bottle pani leke subah nikalte hain roti apni gathri mein bandh ke nikalte hain aur sham ko wo ek bottle aur apni gathri leke wapas aa jate hain yeah. but they need to more water and maybe jo inke employees hote hain they work at construction sites at public uh, places there should be more access to public water shade should be built and more uh, emphasis ki agar koi labor karta hai heat stroke mein to compulsory ek do ghante ka ye frequent breaks diye jane chahiye because at times humanity is much more important than monetary profit and i think one more thing which we can think of that we can uh, request the, the the owner of industry owner of factory owner of uh, business houses owner of that we should ensure at a guardian as a custodian as a owner of that uh, facility you should ensure all kind of facility to the employees for example there should be facility of water especially safe water drinkable water cold water there should be uh they should ensure that they should have some breaks in between the uh, of course during uh, they should not do continuously uh, in the open area in the heated area so i think the on the humanitarian ground uh, they should give some kind of break that this is the relaxation break and of course some kind of you see for example in our uttar pradesh uh, during these days uh, pyaws are there and sharbat you see the the the, the uh, kind of shikanji uh, nimbu uh, lemon water and shikanji and sharbat this is being distributed free, freely on the roads if you go uh, especially in this area especially on tuesday that is the day called the hanuman day and the hanuman day you will find that if you go in the uttar pradesh especially in and around the lucknow area you need not to have water you need not to have your lunch pack because on every road that after 1 km or so there will be some bhandara and bhandara at places you will have a sharbat and then of course you have a cold water and then you have dal chawal kadi chawal or you have puri sabji like this thing so this kind of bhandara is going on this is the tradition in our uttar pradesh and especially in the in an area of lucknow and i have also seen the in gurdwaras that the, the they have the uh, such kind of things and so many uh, societies uh, even the some religious gestures such kind of city and i think we should uh, uh, appreciate these people and i can we can also request to the corporate people to the other people to the even the government 
for example you are the is officer and you are heading the you are a health secretary so as a health secretary whatever the supposed 150 staff is coming to uh, at your place in your office so i think as a custodian of your health department you should ensure if you are a public representative for example you are a member of parliament of that constituency you are a member of legislative assembly of that constituency you are the pradhan of that panchayat you are the uh, block uh, level uh, the leader or you are the taluka leader leader i think so public representative they should also ensure so the professionals the industry men uh, the corporate people uh, the owner of the factories and all these uh, uh, industries and uh, the public representatives and some the, uh, the the civil societies they should come forward that during this time Uh, we have to protect our community so adequate water supply and some lemon water and chikanji which you used to call in uttar pradesh i mean such kind of things should be available so any uh, the last question to uh, i think uh, all of you one by one so in uh, of course one minute you just summarize that what is your take for the society so that our audience doctors they can convey to your their patient their community and their attendance and of course whosoever to uh, they are contacting to them that such instruction should be given and this is the uh, of course the nutshell i would say the conclusion of chess council of india uh, this panel discussion two days related to the heat related illnesses so come one by one so my uh, of course uh, first uh, dr mahesh this is your time and uh, within a one minute you can summarize what you want to give the masses to these attendee doctors so that they can uh, of course propagate further to the society sir sir so my first uh, point will be to emphasize towards the healthcare workers that uh, heat stroke will be the uh, life threatening emergency situation emergency medical condition so uh, delaying the treatment strategy will cause us to the worst outcome Uh, and even mortality can higher up to eighty percent. But if uh, without any delay and early medical care can uh, decline the mortality up to ten percent. So it's a life-threatening medical condition. Uh, first, give a strong suspicion towards that having these kind of scenarios: hypothermia with a CNS dysfunction or uh, altered mental function. Then you should suspect uh, the chance of heat stroke, and you should not miss that finding. And uh, sh- should give the medical care immediately, and we can uh, decline. Uh, we can we ha- can have a good outcome in that scenario. That is the message to the healthcare worker. And the other uh, thing will be the exact awareness, 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 as well as the patient education will be our motto in any ways, by pamphlet or YouTube videos or any other social media platform. We have to give the awareness as early as possible. That should be reached in every strata of the patients in India, and we can uh, diminish the impact of health heat stroke in our population. thank you sir great thank you now i'm coming to dr jain yogesh uh, of course uh, you are from rachi and rachi jharkhand is also very hot very hot i have been um, um, uh, at patna a few days back and that was also very hot and of course the i think the 250 km or 300 km from patna your place is rachi so yes your message or your take home normally message. rachi normally rachi was considered to be a hill station maybe 50 oh. <laughs> but then okay. now the things are different now this time the heat has surpassed all borders and like it was very uh, pathetic this so it is no more hill station okay <laughs> no sir so okay. it was kind of heat wave here this time yeah. uh i would like to tell sir like before this pe- uh, presentation i'll say that i was not so aware about heat stroke so once i was going through the details reading about it i i would like to thank the cci team because this topic really made me uh, read and then learn and when i was not aware so much i can understand that most of the people who have joined were not actually they are not aware what is heat stroke so i have understood the uh, um, the actually the importance of this subject and i would like to like, in further like now maybe the heat wave is going we are very soon going to have monsoon so it does not uh, get a relevance that during monsoon we talk about heat stroke but next year when it comes to march or april i would really like to uh tell my patients who are having comorbid conditions who are having uh, maybe my patient maybe a uh uh, uh a lady who is having a young uh, boy in, in his hand or someone uh, carrying a old uh, parents uh, with them i will emphasize the importance that please don't expose them to the heat waves keep them protected in the house don't allow them uh, uh, to just uh, uh during the peak hours that is 11 to 4 
when the heat waves are the when the sunlight is maximum we should avoid uh, doing strenuous work so this is like i will try to uh, actually emphasize to my patients to their relatives to my uh, to people who, who are coming around me uh, many a times i i see construction uh, uh, construction work going on and there are lot of uh, uh, females carrying their child and doing the work or they have kept their child in the maybe uh, not directly under the sunlight but there is lot of heat in that place so i can emphasize uh, maybe if i meet someone like that i will tell her or him that please take care of the child feed him uh, give him breast feeding frequently feed with water and whatever things so i will uh, uh, from now onwards i'll try to sensitize people around me i may even uh, take part in uh, webinars like this this is like uh, and make some videos put them on my youtube channels so that people can see more and more at least those who are connected to me those who though the people who know me they become more aware thanks sir. thank you uh, coming to dr chandrakan so uh, your ideas your uh, additional inputs for the society and for the our community sir a most important uh, aspect for any disease prevention or any uh, happening prevention uh, like heat stroke also is education so i think uh, we should include such topics uh, especially the basic education like children if they learn in the school itself what is the heat stroke and what are the different heat related injuries and how to prevent it child will remember for a lifetime and uh, even uh, child sir tomorrow's adults and tomorrow's future of our country so i think the information can be disseminated very easier and uh, many people uh, can learn just with a simple education if you keep some topic like that in the children itself in the while they're schooling one thing and second thing uh, we should take uh, seriously the information given by the indian meteorology department whenever they give the alert or they declare the heat wave we should be alerted and uh, we should accordingly educate the people and even government and uh different agencies should take care of the precautions and uh, related to the history and we can prevent accordingly yeah thank you dr chandrakar yeah last but not the least dr ravi yes what is your uh, take on this uh, final take i would say sir i would just say two things uh, some few days ago i was giving a talk in ratlam where one doctor told ki yaar abhi to healthy season chal raha hai na ward mein patient hai na opd mein patient chal rahe hain but ab ye lecture sunne ke baad lag raha hai ki ye healthy season is on the brink of disaster means we have to be very careful and we cannot take it for granted ki this is a healthy season we have to be careful we have to spread more and more awareness and that is the key to our uh, success in this weather and second thing is humans ki apan ne baat kari hai but pashu pakshi bhi hain uh, outside our homes on our terraces we should provide water for everybody basically water is the essence of life आपकी इस बात से कि यूपी में इतना अपना शरबत और शिकंजी मिलती है आई एम श्योर ऑल पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री ये सब कुछ होता है एंड वी नीड टू डू इट मोर एंड एज डॉक्टर्स वी उस शिकंजी हमको हमारे अवेयरनेस और नॉलेज के रूप में बांटते हैं सो थैंक यू डॉक्टर रवि आई थिंक बिफोर आई आस्क डॉक्टर रवि जोशी टू प्रेजेंट द फॉर्मल वोट ऑफ थैंक्स सो आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू द चेस काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया टीम एंड आई एम ऑलवेज अप्रिशिएट their selection of the topics and i think since uh, the my association two three years with chess cci i would say that the leadership of the cci the krishna and pradeep and of course a lot of uh, the core hardcore workers like ravi doshi like uh, atri in like um, uh, uh, of course uh, chennam chetty and so many other people a, a long list is there so i i, I cannot uh, take the name of everyone but they are up to the most of the time it is the krishna's uh, brain which behind the selection of the topic but most of the other people are also giving the input and i think i have experienced the cci is working at a very important innovator i would say it has become a very important incubator center for the uh, selecting the new topics and i think this was also a wonderful topic and i have been so many times the moderator but every time i really enjoyed this uh, webinar of the cci and this is the time uh, to give the formally vote of thanks uh, by dr ravi tukshi uh, thank you thank you to all respected panelists uh, uh, for first and foremost dr Sur- professor dr surekant sir we are really obliged less than 2% top scientists of the world with moderating this very important topic sir this will also be uploaded on youtube for access 
for all eternity and we are very happy that we could moderate it we are obliged i would like to thank my fellow panelists dr chandrakant tarke from hyderabad dr yogesh jain from rachi dr mahesh from kollam i would like to uh, give hearty thanks to our technical team who have given excellent support and sipla uh, and i would I, words are not enough sir suryakant sir ne bola tha ki dil mein left ventricle krishna sir hai sir dil ke har molecule har atom mein agar koi hai to krishna sir hai krishna is eternity and he really guides us through all everything so a big thanks to krishna sir and the whole team of cci for organizing this thank you for all uh, thank you for everything thank you to the audience who have participated in huge numbers and we hope we can as a doctor fraternity spread this message more thank you very much good night thank you and namaste to everyone and it is all because of my esteemed panelists uh, that i can moderate this session dr ravi dr uh, yogesh jain and dr mahesh and dr chandrakant so i think really it was a wonderful uh, evening and uh, of course uh, mm, uh, the lot of people have uh, joined you just can check the data and then you can keep in the whatsapp that what is the latest data uh, the, the the how many people they joined they benefited by this uh, of course uh, webinar and it was a really wonderful and i think hope very soon we will meet again on some other topic thank you thank you very much good night stay safe thank you thank you bye